So we meet again. Thanks for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. Really happy to be here again, seeing you all. <clears throat> Let's see, I got three, the first three people in the room, in the house. Okay. So glad you're all here. Hi, Silas, Maddie, Julie, Josh. <clears throat> A lot of people coming in. Thank you. Uh, Max and from Philly and Ava from Dallas and Sammy from New York. Joanne, Javin, I think, I think that is. Uh, Max and Madeline and Emerson and Bria and Amelia. And uh, who else is here? Uh, Bentley and Alana and Michaela and Drew and Hannah and Clara and Elliot. Hi, thanks for joining me today, Christian and Madeline. We already have 286 people in the room. Uh, the Hopper family in Tennessee. Hi, Hoppers. And the Kendrick kids are here again, and Aiden. And uh, let's see who else. Uh, Mateo, uh, Delaney, and Zoe, and and uh, Asher, and Sean, and Gemma, and Jet are here today, and every day. Thank you. Uh, Melissa, and Jeremy, and Emily, and, and uh, thank you all. Riley and haven't missed a day thank you connor kaylee jd are here from texas all right uh tampa jack and ben from tampa are here and the cox kids and shelby and spencer and and michael and bella and marcus and avery and david and michael and alexa not that alexa hi alexa as a noun Bad can mean that which is below standard or expectations. Alexa, as stop. Decency. As an adjective, Alexa, bad can mean having undesirable stop. or negative qualities. <laughs> Who else is here? Sorry about that. Uh, Alex and Aaron and the Jones kids are here. And Sadie and Will. And, oh, I forgot to show you. Oh, we're going to be uh, starting at 2 o'clock, which is in three minutes. Okay. So who else is here? <clears throat> Harry and Nathan from Roslyn, New York, and Gavin and Gabby in Florida, and Chase and Gavin and Stephen and Jack and the Jones are here. And uh, that is true, what uh, somebody said. Phoebe is here, and uh, Claire from Tennessee, and uh, Micah and Jonah. Uh, we got 642 people and growing. Uh, Rebecca and Juliet, uh, Alexa and James, Anna and Rhoda and Lila and Elliot and Lucas and Connor in Pennsylvania. Uh, everybody in uh, Colonia, New Jersey, the Hastrups and Grace is here and Patrick and Evelyn. Thanks for coming in every day, you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll get started in two, two minutes from now. So you still have time to call your friends, call your cousins in some other part of the country, call them, get them into the into the room to watch because uh, I always like a uh, big crowd. I'll take a sip while we're waiting. we got uh, two minutes left. Uh, Langhorn PA, Alex and Benjamin and Baton Rouge and uh, the Glass and Searle families and Meredith and Rochester, New York. Okay, we got one minute to go. Milo and Nixie from Indiana and Carson and Juliana from Hershey, PA. I miss Hershey Park. That's a great place. I want to go back someday. Okay, we're going to get started very soon, you guys. I don't need this anymore, so I can just, I can just throw it away. Okay, one minute. <sighs> thanks to all of you. I can't mention all your names, and I apologize for that, but thanks for coming, all of you. I read all your comments. <clears throat> okay. Let's do this thing. One fifty-nine East Coast time. Soon it will be. You know what you know what I say. It's go time, baby. Thanks for coming, all of you. Uh, my name is Dan Gutman. I am the author of the My Weird School series and various other books for kids too. 
And let's get started right away with our question of the day. And I noticed when I was reading your comments yesterday, somebody asked me the question, and I didn't even catch your name, I'm sorry for that, asked, why is Mr. Docker still there if he was fired last week? Excellent question. And the answer is that um, we are doing the books backwards in time. So the first week we did Miss Blake is a Flake, and that was number four in the My Weirder School series. Then we did uh, Dr. Floss is the Boss, which is number three. Then last week we did Miss Porter is, is out of order. That's number two. And this week we're doing number one in My Weirder is School, Dr. Snow has got to go. So, so if you're wondering what's next, uh, here, you don't have to wonder. Um, this is what we're going to do next. We're going to do the whole. We're going to do the whole uh, my weirdest school series uh, in backwards order. And you might want to uh, maybe take a picture of this off your screen or take a screenshot. If not, I'm going to post it tonight anyway. And this is we're going to start with Ms. Hall and go all the way through the my weirdest school series. Okay. So I hope that answers your questions. You don't have to ask me what's the next book. You know what it is. Okay. You ready to get started? So we were reading Dr. Snow Has Got to Go. Uh, in the first two chapters, um, Mr. Docker, the science teacher, informed the kids that their STEM scores, science, technology, engineering, math, have been not very good lately. And so he brought in his uh, old college roommate, Dr. Snow, um, who is a brilliant scientist, to help raise the school's STEM scores. And uh, the chapter ended with uh, the, the information that they were going to have a science fair at the school. Okay, So now we're going to start with chapter three, which is titled Brainstorming. OK, you guys ready? Gather around the big screen TV, or your tablet, or your computer screen, or your smartphone, or whatever it is you're watching me on. Here we go. <clears throat> A science fair? I never heard of a science fair. Will there be cotton candy at the science fair? Asked Ryan. No, said the snowman. Will there be rides? Asked Alexia. No. Can we win stuffed animals? I asked. No. What? The science fair sounded like a science unfair to me. Boo! Everybody was booing and hooting and hollering and freaking out. Mr. Docker held up his hand and made a, a V with his fingers. That's the victory peace sign. It means shut up. The science fair, the science fair is going to be fun, the snowman told us. Each of you can do an experiment, just like a real scientist. Kids can't be scientists, somebody yelled. Sure they can, replied the snowman. You can conduct experiments in chemistry, physics, biology, and engineering using everyday objects you have around your house. Each of you will do a project. Wait, I think he just said the P word. Project is a horrible word because it means work. It means cutting and pasting and drawing and gluing and folding and stapling stuff. I'd rather fall into quicksand, quicksand than do a project. I'd rather get attacked by a porcupine than do a project. I'd rather go to school in the, on the weekend than do a project. Will there be prizes for the best project? asked Andrea, who will do anything as long as she might win a prize so she can show she's better than everybody else. Yes, said the snowman. The student with the best science project will win a year's pass to the city science museum, and they will also receive a year's supply of Porky's pork sausages. Yay, everybody started cheering. And here's Jim's picture of everybody saying yay. I don't like museums very much, but Porky's pork sausages are the best pork sausages. Ooh, I hope I win, said Little Miss Perfect as we filed out of the old porpoise room. 
Me too, said Emily, who always agrees with everything Andrea says. When we got back to class, Mr. Cooper passed out. I mean, he passed out paper and pencils. He told us to start taking notes and brainstorming about science fair ideas. Brainstorming is when you have a storm in your brain, so it has the perfect name. I need to use the restroom, he said. I'll be back in a few minutes to see how you're making out. Ugh, gross, we all shouted. As soon as Mr. Cooper left, Ryan, Michael, Neil, and I snapped into action. We got up on our chairs and shook our butts at the class. Boys, Andrea said, rolling her eyes. Well, you waste your time acting like dumbheads. I'm going to get to work so I can win the science fair contest. I really didn't care about winning the science fair contest. I just wanted to make sure that Andrea didn't win. So I sat back down and I tried to think of a cool science fair project. We should blow something up, I suggested. Scientists are always blowing stuff up. Blowing stuff up is not science, said little Miss Party Pooper. Science is all about inventing new useful things and building things that make life easier for people. Hmm, inventing things. That got all of us thinking. I'm going to invent a solar powered skateboard, said Alexia. The top will be covered with solar panels. That's a cool idea, I said. Using nuclear power would be even cooler, but it's hard to fit a nuclear reactor on a skateboard. <clears throat> I'm going to invent an electric chicken chucker, said Ryan. What does a chicken chucker do, asked Neil. It chucks chickens, Ryan replied. I don't know why chucking chickens would make anybody's life easier. It sure wouldn't make a chicken's life easier. But in my head, I imagined a machine chucking chickens, and it did seem cool. And oh, here's a picture, one of Jim's pictures of, of uh, Alexia riding her um, solar powered skateboard and uh, Ryan's chicken chucker. <laughs> okay. I'm going to invent a time machine, said Neil. That way I can go back to the year before Twinkies were invented. Why would you want to do that? Asked Emily. So I could invent Twinkies, Neil replied. I'll be rich, rich, rich. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. I'm going to invent an air conditioner that you wear on your feet, I said. Why would you want to put air conditioners on your feet, asked Neil. Sometimes my feet get hot, I explained. I'm going to invent, invent anti-gravity underwear, said Michael. Why, Neil asked. So I can fly, of course, said Michael. We were all coming up with really good ideas for the science fair. I drew a picture of myself walking around with two little air conditioners on my feet. What are you going to do for your science project, Andrea? Asked Emily. Oh, my project is a secret, Andrea replied. I tried to peek at Andrea's paper, but she was hanging all over it so I couldn't see. I still say we should blow something up, I announced. Maybe we can invent a robot that will make people's lives easier, and then we'll have to blow it up when the robot turns evil. I saw that in a movie once. At that moment, the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. I glanced toward the doorway and saw the snowman's fizzy psycho hair in the corner. He was rubbing his hands together and listening to our conversation. I don't care what anybody says. The snowman is definitely crazy and he probably wants to take over the world. There are only two reasons why anybody ever rubs their hands together. Either they want to take over the world or they're cold. And the snowman wasn't cold. And here's a picture of Dr. Snow rubbing his hands together. Okay, that's chapter three. Are you ready for chapter four? Okay, hey, before we do that, I, I just had a thought. You know, in the beginning of the book, 
this might help you in case you're getting the characters a little bit confused. Uh, Jim did this nice picture of all the characters with their names, so you can see, you know, what AJ, Ryan, Michael, Alexia, uh, Emily, Neil, and uh, and Andrea look like. Okay, okay, chapter four. Wait a minute, gotta find it now. Okay, chapter four is titled The Scientific Method. So you didn't know this book was gonna be educational, did you? Okay, first, for first period, the next day, we had science. When we got to the science room, the snowman wasn't there, but Mr. Docker was. Follow me, he told us. Where are we going, asked Emily. We're going on a field trip replied Mr. Docker. Yay! Field trips are cool. One time, we went on a field trip to the zoo. Another time, we went on a field trip to a natural history museum. But if you ask me, they shouldn't be called field trips unless they take you on a trip to a field. Then they would have the perfect name. Mr. Docker led us to a secret stairway near the science room. We started climbing the steps and climbing, and climbing. Climbing steps is tiring. And here's Jim's picture of all the kids climbing the steps up higher and higher. <clears throat> Where are we going, asked Michael. You'll find out, said Mr. Docker. I thought I was gonna die from climbing all those steps. I was huffing and puffing and sweating and panting. That means I was wearing pants. It would be weird to climb the steps at school with no pants on. Finally, Mr. Docker opened a door at the top of the stairs, and you'll never believe in a million hundred years what was up there. We were on the roof of the school. Did you ever go out on the roof of your school? It's cool up there. It's like being on the top of the Empire State Building. You can see forever from the roof, or at least the next block and you'll never believe who was up there. I'm not gonna tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. It was Dr. Snow, the snowman. He had a rope tied to a bucket and he was swinging the bucket around his head like a lasso. And here's a picture of Dr. Snow uh, swinging a bucket on the roof of the school around his head. That was weird. People who swing buckets around the heads, their heads are definitely crazy. Hi, everybody, said the snowman. Why are you swinging a bucket around your head, Dr. Snow, asked Ryan. I bet it's part of the science experiment, said Andrea. Right you are, said the snowman. Andrea smiled the smile she smiles to let everybody know that she knows something nobody else knows. The snowman stopped swinging the bucket around and around and put it on the floor. Now I'm going to fill this bucket up with maple syrup, he said, as he took a big jug of maple syrup and poured it into the bucket. Why are you doing that, I asked. Are we having pancakes? No, said the snowman. Now I'm going to swing the bucket around my head again with syrup inside it. Won't the syrup fly all over the place? asked Emily. It will be a sticky mess. There's only one way to find out, said the snowman. That's why scientists do experiments. The snowman picked up the bucket with the rope and started swinging it around slowly. Emily looked scared. I'm scared, said Emily. Okay, now I'm going to swing it a little faster, said the snowman. Stand back. Watch out, shouted Emily, covering her eyes. Run for your lives, shouted Neil. The snowman started swinging <laughs> the bucket around faster and faster. The bucket was flying around him sideways. The snowman looked like one of those cowboys at a rodeo who was about to rope a steer. And then, the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. Nothing. The maple syrup didn't fly out of the bucket like I thought it would. It just stayed in there, even though the bucket was sideways. 
wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. It's like magic, I hollered. No, this is a demonstration of centripetal force, said the snowman. When an object is moving in a circular path, centripetal force keeps it fixed on that path. Cool, we all said. Isn't science interesting, asked Mr. Docker. When I grow up, Andrea said, I'm going to be a scientist. Me too, said Emily, who always does everything Andrea does. The snowman kept swinging the bucket around and around. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. I guess the rope that was attached to the bucket came loose because the next thing anybody knew, the bucket of maple syrup went flying off the roof. Here's a picture, one of Jim's pictures of the bucket flying off the roof when it becomes untethered from the rope. Ah! shouted the snowman as he fell down. He still had the rope in his hand, but the bucket was gone. We all ran to the edge of the roof to look below. The bucket was on the grass in front of the school and the sidewalk was covered with maple syrup. And that was a demonstration of centrifugal force, said the snowman. No worries, I'll clean that mess up later. I'm glad nobody was walking around down there, said Mr. Docker. Somebody could have been hurt. That was weird. But if you think that was weird, you'll never believe the weird thing that happened next. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. <laughs> All right. So that's it for today, folks. Tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to read chapter five and six. Uh, chapter five is titled The Great Egg Drop Challenge. But uh, before we go, how about the joke of the day? You ready for the joke of the day? All right, here it is. Okay. <clears throat> What's the difference between a tuna and a piano? Give up. You can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tuna. <laughs> All right. I'll see you back here. Same time, same place, tomorrow, okay? Read like crazy. Wash your hands like crazy. And I'll see you then. Stay safe, everybody.